Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So full disclosure, with the new month, it being September, I got my Strategist Squad rewards, which was an additional 1600 Trinity Crystals for the month. So definitely helps in terms of letting me do a few more additional draws on banners and so on. So, but yeah, for now I'm going to try to save it for critical banners that come up. All right, so other than the additional Trinity Crystals that I got, let's talk about the other things that have changed in the past two weeks, as I did not do a Nitro setup video last week. And two major changes, actually, there's been several major changes, right? Tiaris is finished. She is now six stars. Liana has just finished, and she will also hit six stars now. Which gives her a decent stat boost, right? 24 additional intelligence. And more importantly, she can now dispel two debuffs from allies as opposed to just one. Another character that has increased in star level is my Leonhard, who is now at four, uh, four stars. So he gets a nice increase in his attack so far. And now he gets a bit more stats and recovers more hit points. Act again has gone from four turns to three, which all helps. But of course, until your Leonhardt is at the full six stars, he's still not exactly an amazing character. Nonetheless, my Leonhardt is progressing. He does have access to all his classes because I put two runestones into him. So he is pretty well built up. Yeah. Currently, I have a Bloodsword hunting on him as well as Lone Star uh, Armlet, and we'll see how it goes. So Leonhard is currently in a, in a pretty good position. I'm going to be continuing to farm his shards. I'm going to need 250 of them. So that is going to take a long time, right? We're looking at 83 days. So he will not be at 6 stars for Apex Season 1 since it's only 44 days. But Apex Season 2, he'll definitely be at 6 stars. So Leonhard, I'm in the process of grinding up. And I also mentioned I finished off Liana. So now my current characters that I'm, I will be grinding is Leonhard, Luna, and the third character will probably be, be initially Shafaniel because I want to finish her off, bring or at least bring her up to five stars to make her usable. And after I get Shafina to five stars, I'll probably start doing Listel to get her to five stars because she only needs 25 shards. And after Listel and Shafaniel are done, that's when I'll probably start on Juggler. Because I need Juggler to be at least 5 stars as well. Ideally 6 stars, but tanks at 5 stars are quite usable. So that's where I'll get my tanks to. For now. So overall, characters are in pretty decent positions, I would say. Right? Uh, I'll have quite a few of them at 5 stars. Which should be enough for me to use for most of the content. All right, so other than these changes, I should talk about my dragon farming results, shouldn't I? Because it, there's been two weeks where I haven't covered that. So in terms of dragon farming results, now I don't know if I mentioned this previously, but I have stopped grinding dragons entirely because instead of grinding dragons, I now simply uh, use the sweeps, right? So in, I use my daily sweep chances on the dragon runs primarily, allowing me to sweep four or five times every day. And that gives me a good amount of dragon runs that way. Yeah. It saves me a lot of time. I no longer have to grind like crazy on Sundays, for example, even though I have a much reduced chance of getting weaponry. 
So with that said, let's show the dragon farm results of the past week. And just give me a moment to bring that up. Hmm. Okay, so here we are. The first week of September gave me one, two, three, four, five, six, six SSRs in total, including the Overlord's badge, right? And then last week gave me one, two, three, four SSRs total. That does not include the uh, Timeless Trial accessory, which I think was an Elven Ring, which was kind of garbage. So five one week, four the other week, which is not bad considering I'm barely farming dragons now. I'm just sweeping, right? So the first week, there's not been anything particularly great, right? Uh, Overlord's badge from the f first week of September. The rest was really just ore or, you know, items I keep in my bag. And in the second week, it was basically all items I can turn into war, right? Goddess Dress, Last Night, Tiara, and Carbon Fiber Helmet. So nothing particularly special either week. Um, I didn't get any SSR accessories from the last 12 random accessory box purchases so far. So that's been a bit of a negative, but you know, that's how the RNG factor goes. So nothing particularly great, just more and more ore for me to get Epic Martial Spirits to upgrade my existing equipment, which I'm not going to complain about because I do need Epic Martial Spirits pretty badly right now. Um, in particular, if I just go back into the game, there's still quite a few pieces of equipment I still need to upgrade, like the Odin's Battle Helm, like the Soul Stealer Headdress, like the Charon for Leden. Um, so lots of helmets that I could upgrade, each of the each of which needs three. So I do need a lot of epic martial spirits, right? I could also finish the Jorman Gandir's Eye, can still at level forty. I need to upgrade it to level fifty, right? Um, other than this stuff, right? Imelda's gear is actually not complete. For example, if I bring Imelda up, neither her armor or Helm are actually complete right now. Although I did put an Epic Martial Spirit into her helm. So it's almost at level 50. So, but I need another Epic Martial Spirit into the Baldur's White Robe on Imelda. So that's another piece of equipment that I need to upgrade. And in addition to all this, um, I still need some SSR armors for mages. For example, you know, Sophia is using a level 40 devout code. Chloe is currently using, you know, level 50, green leaf code. So, and then I'm not even sure if Tieris has an SSR armor yet. Oh, she does. But yeah, so there's two SSR armors I need already, right? For these two healers, Chloe and Sophia. And not just that, if I'm to use Shafenio, I need to upgrade her blue moon to level 50 get her an armor as well, and probably upgrade her a Holy Ring rather than the Star Earring. So the Holy Ring will need to be raised to level 50 as well. So that's another three, uh, overlord, three Epic Martial Spirits, right? Let's say three for the armor, and then two more here. So that's another eight Epic Martial Spirits. And then finally, as you just saw, I still have the fourth Overlord's badge sitting in my accessory. I should definitely upgrade this one. There's always a use for Overlord's badge. So, a whole bunch of gear that still needs upgrades right now is where I'm, I'm sitting at. Okay, so that was the Dragon Farm results of last week and my current gear status, more or less. So, what other major changes have occurred in the past week. Um, well, one very big change is I do now have both Waller and Gizaroth. So they're both sitting 
in my I guess hero screen. Gizaroth, I really do want I really should upgrade because I find him very useful for the faction buff and for a summon. So he could be used in Apex, even if he can't do much damage, right? But that's kind of a work in progress. We'll see. Right for now, he's not upgraded yet. Other than these changes, let's jump briefly into my training grounds. And my training grounds is in a very good position now, overall. You know, infantry is literally complete in terms of using gold items. Okay. Lancer training ground is complete except for her attack increase. Okay. And that's because I have no real interest in upgrading the attack increase of Lancers. When I can, when Leaden can one-shot everything in PVE, anyways. Uh, the only thing that's missing is this last hit point upgrade, but that just requires gold and a few more chess machines. Calvary Training Ground is at the 34, fully upgraded at 34% to all stats. The advanced tax, though, still need a bit more, right? There, it's at level 13, level 13, and level 14. So, but the cavalry training ground is nearly complete, just like that. Flyer training ground is very similar to cavalry training ground. They're both nearly complete, just a few more stat upgrades, right? Not much though. Uh, it's mainly just, I think, yeah, defense and hit points, just a bit more. Holy training ground is totally complete in gold items as well. All the advanced texts have been finished here. And the Archer and Assassin is reasonably complete. At least all the core texts have hit 14, 14, and 13 here. This one just needs more gold to finish. So it is effectively 14, 14, 14. The advanced text though still needs some upgrades, quite a bit in truth. Because these are level 9 level 9 and level 11 and actually ironically enough I'm actually missing upgrades on the <laughs> text that needs silver items so this is level 9 this is level 8 so there's a few more percentages increase I can get here but the fact that my archer and assassin training ground has come so far is a very good sign so overall I would say my training fields are pretty much complete except for of course using SSR items which if you were to do those upgrades in truth you truly truly do need to have the privilege purchased of Flag of Courage. Right? You're going to need that extra SSR item every single day for you to be able to do those kind of upgrades. But, at the end of the day, I'm quite happy with the status of my training ground now. Alright, so... Other than that, has there been any changes to my hero gear? There has been, but I can't even recall what changes I've made, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. It's been mainly I've been rolling enchant values, so for example, this Bloodsword Trenting has 11% attack and 20 attack, right? Uh, Leonhard in general has been purely focused on increasing attack. So he's pretty much has max attack percentage increases. He is missing some hit point increases, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I've been steadily trying to reroll juggler enchants for hit points and defense value so he can do damage as well as tank. So that's been another change that's been kind of ongoing. I gave up some hit point percentages for more defense. I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but clearly I'm going to have to roll these two enchants more. The ideal for juggler truly is hit point percentage, defense percentage, and magic defense percentage. And that's because of the beast shock effect, right? Where you add 40% of your magic defense and defense values to your attack. In addition, you know, being able to have more defense and magic defense and hit points means he can tank hits much better. 
So juggler enchants are very much a work in progress. The stell enchants are also a work in progress. I've been actually re-rolling her for less hit points, but more magic defense. So for example, you know, speed boots now has 6% hit points, 6% magic defense. The feathered crown actually has no hit point increase, but 15% magic defense increase. The galaxy cloak currently has just 8% magic defense increase and 143 hit points. This one definitely needs re-rolling, definitely. And the flail currently just, I left it as is, 6% hit points and 8 hit points, which is kind of meh, but I'm going to be replacing the flail eventually with this Oath of Justice anyways. And the Oath of Justice at least has 4% magic defense and 4% hit points. So Listel, kind of a work in progress, steadily changing up her enchants as well. This one clearly does need a replacement though. So both of them need enchant upgrades. For the matter, so does Landius, right? When you can have 15% of each stat, you know, there's a 15% increase, it's not that great, right? So he's also, you know, a lot of these enchants are works in progress. You can definitely re-roll them for stronger characters, but for now they perform okay, so I'll leave it as is. In large part because I'm so I'm lacking so much gold. Just really lacking gold. Other than that, I don't think I really built up any new sets of gear. I mean the one piece of gear I really did upgrade in these past few weeks was a chief's helmet. Because the its ability to uh, negate effects that prevent characters from being healed will be key for PvP. I also, oh, I also did upgrade a King's Crown to level 50. Um, and that's probably going to go on Zerida. This is the first one I've upgraded, and I'll definitely give this one to Zerida. Also managed to get a very good enchant on me. 4% attack, 11% hit points, which is near ideal. So, yeah. Another piece of gear for Zerida for PvP, which is a nice bonus to see. Bond upgrades. Bonds, equipment, and it's, well, enchants have mostly eaten up all my uh, money, but I did do some bond upgrades, in particular to Leonhard. You know, he's now at max, 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 five and six on these stats, so I'm slowly raising these two to level nine. And his, even his heart bot is at level 7. So my Leonhardt is nearly fully upgraded. He's the one I'm focusing on right now. I'll finish Leonhardt first before moving back to my healers to finish them off. Because I recall that right now I'm very much struggling to keep my healers alive in Apex. So, you know, but one step at a time, right? And it's because of these upgrades that are being done that I haven't really been playing Apex in truth because I want to get my characters upgraded first so that they can survive the enemy Leonhards before I really jump back into Apex Arena. It's just that simple. Uh, when I challenge this I want to be able to easily and smoothly get myself up to Langrisser rank and to do so I really need to be able to f survive Leonhards. It's just if I can't survive Leonhard, I can't really play Apex properly at this time, since everyone I'm facing tends to have a Leonhard. So, basically, that's pretty much my status, you know? Getting my Heart Bond upgraded on everybody. And while I'm doing that, slowly getting more characters available for use, right? Such as Shafaniel, such as making Listel stronger. I don't think there's much else that needs to be covered in this video at this point. In terms of upgrades, that's really my current status. Uh, I'm tr trying to find a balance on gold use between upgrading new pieces of equipment as well as uh, upgrading bonds and enchants. And that's very much a tough balance I'm finding. Um, one thing I should mention as well though this week is that I currently have 15 runestone shards which means I'm going to have 20 this week for another runestone. And in addition to that, I can still also purchase 
my runestone from the guild store. So that would give me two additional runestones that I can use to upgrade either another character or upgrade, let's say, Liana to have her double class mastery, right? Summoner and Hermit, or get my Liana for now, the Bishop class, so that she can apply Gospel, and also get my Listel up her class so that she can get Reaper Starch. So I haven't really decided who will get these two runestones because there are lots of options, right? Liana is one, Listel is another possibility, Shafaniel is another possibility because once she hits five stars and has double class mastery, she would be very usable as well. Right? Single with just single mastery, not as much. But still usable. So there's three different characters who I can commit those runestones into, and I haven't really decided which one will get them. Okay, and other than that, the future plans is of course I need to finish up Shafaniel's gear so that she can be used for Apex, because right now I do not have enough mage sets for to properly do Apex just yet. Lots of works in progress, which is what is keeping me from seriously doing Apex Arena yet again. Alright, so that concludes this video. I hope you found this information useful. I tried to keep this brief about because these last two weeks have really been just enchant gambling primarily and doing training grounds and bond upgrades. Thanks for watching everyone, and on that note, Nitro out.